Do you want to buy UK assets here? Uh, no, as you may remember, Alex, you know, we've been structurally underweight UK equities and UK assets for, you know, really ever since the, um, the, 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 the referendum back on the 23rd of June 2016. You know, equities in dollar terms in the UK are still down over 20 percent, even with today's bounce. You know, think at where sterling was just a year ago. Sterling against the dollar was at 132. We've not even broken through that kind of level again. So I, I don't think this is a full endorsement. As your uh, analyst was just saying to us, reporter was saying there, you know, we still have a significant number of hurdles to, to clear. And the first of those really comes on Saturday. Today. And until we're through that, then I think markets have really just put UK equities and the sterling back into that neutral zone where purchasing power parity is over 40 percent at 140. And, you know, coming down, you're going down to back towards 120 or even lower in sterling dollar cross rate. So, so you know, we would still be very nervous. So, Ian, what I do think is interesting is what we learn when we get these big headlines is you get an immediate reaction to the upside, say, in yeah. the cable rate. Uh, the dollar, 200-day moving average, move into EM, stocks getting a nice uplift, money coming out of bonds. Are we learning anything about the reaction function and the psychology of the market, and how do you ignore it? Uh, you know, I, in truth, the answer seems to be no. We aren't learning anything at all, Alex, because we get these pops, and they last for a day, two days, two weeks, and we see that wish to see a rotation into value and out of growth. But the truth is, until we get the scope to deliver escape velocity and we see you know the dollar a much weaker currency and the rest of the world starting to pick up more aggressively then we are not going to escape this um, environment that favors growth stocks mm -hmm. defensive assets and potentially just bonds and u.s treasuries well then walk me through what a reversal say in the dollar then looks like i mean so we're at 97 i'm just looking at the straight up dollar index we're sitting around the 200 day moving average like what do you need to see what kind of breakdown do you need to see to feel better about risk well, realistically, I think you need to see that dollar significantly lower, probably down towards 90 on the DXY. And, oh, wow. you know, that and potentially even lower. Yeah. So it's got to be a big move. Historically, when you've seen these moves come that have really provided a support for global growth, support for global equities, you've needed that significantly weaker um, dollar as a real driver. And the IMF financial stability report just highlighted the, the degree of fragility that we still have in the global economy here. So, you know, for us, even if we get some kind of resolution on Brexit, mm -hmm. you know, there are still no winners from Brexit because it, we've still got a whole range of debates around mm -hmm. the future arrangements and that relationship between the UK and Europe will be fundamentally broken. And, you know, that is not going to help global trade. World air freight is already down six, seven percent year on year. You know, these are the things that have to really turn around before we get excited again.